Well, hello, everyone. As you can tell, I'm still a little under the weather. Um, still got a little fever going on, but uh, home from work uh, today. And uh, I wanted to show you guys something. I uh, talked to Ian, and Ian has given me permission to show you guys a video that he's got in his subscription section so, or his members area. So if you're not a member of Ian's channel, go over there and, uh, you know, give him a little support and subscribe. I think it's uh, five bucks a month or for the membership, but he does videos on there that you don't get to see in the regular feed. So this is one that he did not too long ago. And, uh, you know, I figured uh, since he's allowed me so graciously to do this, I will show it. Um, so give me a second to get this uh, all squared up here and uh, get it on the screen. Oh, hold on. Let me uh, redo that just to make sure that it's uh, that I'm sharing my audio, which I wasn't. So we can hear it together. It's about uh, five minutes. So bear with me and check it out. I want to show you something that I've seen in my shed and I don't know what to make of it and I'm not going to say anything about it just I'm going to show you it just about five degrees in the shed this was on the 20th of February so what's that uh two or three weeks ago Maybe a little bit of bearding three weeks ago. I got to stay out of here because the more I come in here, the more I fuss over the colonies, the more messy fronts I'm starting to see. So yesterday, where's that fat clunk? Yesterday, I put in that. A nappy tablet. Because a friend sent it to me and I just wanted to try it out. And I put it in a number of these colonies. I wanted to... Whoa. It's going to be painful. Just give me a second. I wanted to put it in this on the bottom of more colonies, but all these colonies are touching the bottom board and I can't get these screens in. So I did this one because there's a smaller cluster. Salvage these bees. So this was put in yesterday. Look at the mite drop. Big this colony. This is just a little. Oh, well, it looks pretty big on the top. Let's. They're not touching the bottom board, so let's call them like a six framer or something like that. Maybe a bit smaller because they have mites on them. Let's go count these mites. Fuck. God damn it. Ah, that's why I hate feeding syrup in the shed. Ah. I went into winter with very low mite counts, so I thought, but as we all know, there's no such thing. that syrup mess up. Okay, let's just do a rough count here. <coughs> you can 
kind of see the size of the cluster. Well, maybe it's a bigger colony, I think. Just tucked up a little bit higher up because it looks like it's covering all the, the frass that falls. It's covering like probably six, seven frames here. Okay, so let me just do a rough count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, two, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, <laughs> hey, yeah. thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four. Forty five, forty six, forty seven, forty eight, forty nine, fifty, fifty one, fifty two, fifty three, fifty four, fifty five, fifty six, fifty eight, fifty nine, sixty one, sixty two, sixty three, sixty four, sixty five, sixty six, sixty seven, seventy seven, seventy two, seventy three, seventy four, seventy five, seventy six, seventy seven, seventy eight, eighty, one, eighty two, eighty three, eighty four, eighty five. 6, 7, 8, 8, 9, 90. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Oh, oh, oh. One. Now cracks me up. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. One, two, three, 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 four, twenty-four. One hundred and twenty-four mites. I counted. One day drop after putting in that tablet. What the hell? <laughs> Let me uh, pause that. <laughs> well, it didn't pause. Ugh. There we go. Sorry about that. But uh, 24 hours on that particular colony. So obviously results will vary, right? Uh, based on mite loads in the colony and all kinds of things. But that was that particular video was 24 hours. Um, so it is pretty good results, you know. Um, everybody that I've uh, talk to about the tablet that has used the tablet has had similar results. Um, I mean, it's a little bit broad. I mean, Canada, uh, in the South, in the North, in the Midwest, in, uh, <laughs> out in California, everybody's got kind of the same uh, results happening if they have mite load. Um, so I am currently sitting on a ton of tablets uh, myself here. Um, and it's getting time, guys. It's spring. It's spring buildup. You should put them in in the spring and in the fall on top of the brood. Um, you know, and allow them to consume those tablets. If you wait too long, it gets into the flow. They don't take it. If you're feeding them, they won't take it. If, uh, you know, if you're putting uh, fondant on them, they're not going to take it. So, um, you know, that's, yeah, mine are looking good. Uh, they're looking good. And, I'm speculating right now because I had one colony that it was a big colony. It devoured the tablets very quickly. And, um, you know, we fly all the time down here and they, um, so I put some more on it yesterday and they're also, um, what I noticed with that colony, that one colony in particular had some, hive beetles in it. Um, but the rest of mine, 
I don't see any hive beetles anywhere in the whole colony. So I'm hopeful we'll test that later on in the year um, to see if, in fact, it is helping keep the beetle population at bay. Um, with the one I put it in yesterday, I'll give it a few days when I go back out and do inspections, maybe this weekend, weather permitting, we'll see if it's taken the beetles right out of there. Um, so that's pretty interesting. And if you follow, uh, and Ian's in here, so he may be able to correct me. It looks by the videos that he had also oxalic acid vaporized them if, about a month before that inside the building. So if that's not the case, please let me know. But through your paid content, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, so that is, you know, people are having good results, guys. They really are. Um, and hopefully you guys give the tablets a shot. And yeah, I mean, they're going to really work it. If, uh, especially if they don't have enough feed or enough foragers to get out there and really bring, you know, the nectar in, if you're getting a little bit of a nectar flow like we are here. But even that, when I put it, the tablet on the colony yesterday, they started going at it right away. So it's uh, pretty impressive. And uh, what I'm willing to do... Um, as encouragement, let me see here. Um, let me see if I can. Start a new one here. Um, I don't know if it'll, it's not going to let me do that. Let's see. Uh, I will do... Free shipping from now. Let's see. Oh. Let's see if that'll work. Hold on. All right, I will give free shipping on the website using code free. It's all caps, though. Free ship 24 at checkout. So there's a box for a code. So um, I've got cases. I probably have nine cases or so of tablets, so I'm not in jeopardy of running out. So uh, until March 15th, I'll give free shipping on the on the website. Uh, free shipping to Canada. That's tricky. <laughs> That's tricky. <laughs> um, they do have some in Canada already, though. So uh, you might be able to get it through Dancing Bee in Canada and get, get some uh, shipping help. So, you know, feel free to use that. Um, I'm going to drop a link if anybody wants to join Sick Bob today and uh, join me for a few minutes on here. Uh, let's see. Let me go to my my channel here so I can... Drop it in the chat and let me mute this so you guys don't get the feedback. And uh, let's see. Oh, it's going to make me watch commercials, so give me a second. Here we go.
paste, pasting it in. And as soon as somebody comments, I'll be able to pin that. Nothing March through November. Well, you guys are, Ian, do you have any idea when, uh, when you're going to be moving bees out yet? There you go. And, uh, you know, trying to do a few things while I'm at the house. Um, mainly clean this office out. Hey, I might have, we might have, pa I might have passed it to you. Uh, might have, might have passed it to you because it's been going around. They got me on antibiotics and everything right now. And uh, there we will have, we do have actually a West Coast distributor uh, of Appy tablets. And he is getting his website, um, getting his website up and running. As soon as he tells me it's good to go, I'll let, let y'all know that uh, Loma Vista Bee Company is ready to go. Hey Frank, how's it going, buddy? What you doing? Eating lunch? Good. So what kind of uh, ice cream? I goofing off. <laughs> no, no heat and air work today. So what kind? What kind of hive number? No, I actually retired. I got fed up with the whole thing, and I retired. You retired. I Until spring. Wife. Yeah, I sent my wife to work. No, forever. I gave up. You gave up, really? So, yeah, I'm, I put my wife to work. So we'll, we'll see how that works. The uh, see see if y'all can keep it going. Yeah, if not, we'll have to do something else. Well. Just move south. The heat and air works all so, year round down here. <laughs> we can we can keep so you. What's your brood number right now? Um, actually, I do have a. Uh, well, I got Brad coming in. Whoop! I thought I did. He clicked out. The um, brood number. Uh, most you talking about which in any specific colony? I mean. They're brooding up. Yeah, but... like on average. What, what's your average in the boxes right now? Um, what do you see? Like three to six or? It just eight? depends. Yeah, usually four to six frames. And uh, I'm starting to add boxes and move brood up and give her more room to lay. So we're just, I mean, it is, it has been warm, but we still were having cold nights. So she would start laying, and then they would clean it out again, right? Because they couldn't keep it warm. Now our nighttime temperatures are warm enough to where they're starting to uh, starting to be able to keep it warm in the box for them. So they're going to start start growing. So you actually uh, saw a lot on the uh, landing board dead when they drag it out. Oh yeah, I mean they uh, they're really I've got a lot of like drone larvae right now so they're trying to hatch some drones which means they're it's getting mating season right for them so it's starting it's starting to go not uh not insane but it is uh it is going so it's uh 74 degrees here right now and, and uh your night nights yeah. are what 50s uh yeah i mean they're kind of fluctuating last week they were kind of cool let me see what we got right now um so today the it was low of 47 but then it's 52 62 57 54 uh monday it's supposed to get back to 38 and 37 so maybe they'll be uh capped by that time hey brother brad hang on
stack. Still trying to right. snow. Losing control of my tabs here. <laughs> uh, it's easy to do. Get enough of them open like we do. Sorry, it was a, a false start there earlier. Oh, no problem. I see you got the uh, uh, stacks and stacks of pieces, parts behind you. You betcha. I just started. One cover down, 153 to go. 253 to go. Sorry. 253 more to go? Yeah. They're the covers? Yeah. So how many yeah. boxes you're making for that? Chewing the glue off my fingers. <laughs> Chewing the glue. I don't build boxes. Um, Buys I, boxes. I do not build boxes. So that means you have to buy like three boxes for each one of them, 200? Well, kind of depends, I guess. Depends on what you're doing. I'm buying one box for each one of those covers. So you're doing a single brood chamber? These are, these are six frame covers, so they typically... You just buy one six frame box and then use 10 frame honey supers on top. With the queen excluder in between. Yeah. The yeah, battery. It's not, it's not a whole size. It's not a whole hive. It's just a six frame. These are six frames. I'm building 200 of the, the 10 framers. But they're not for me. They're for somebody else. So I'm not buying. I'm not, I'm not really expanding. I'm, I'm building a few new setups for myself, but I'm not really expanding. The so you're going to go into nuke sales? Well, I sometimes sell some nukes when I when I can. Yeah. So what's going on? Just trying to recover. Um, you know, I think uh, the doctor is wrong in my case. You're pregnant? N now I've got double ear infection and a and a chest <laughs> congestion. And uh um, I had a smart crack, but it's a family show. So. <laughs> I think I'm pregnant, but I think it's an alien because it's about a 20 year gestation period. <laughs> there, I said it. Yeah, it's funny how your, na your nasal, your sinuses, all that stuff is connected to your stomach. It's all it goes back and forth and everything gets messed up. Well, the funny thing is they tested me for flu, like two types of flu and COVID, right? I was negative on all of it, but I have chest congestion, head congestion, and both ears are uh, infected. And so they gave me steroids and some antibiotics, but my wife has had it. And now the lady at work, because I work when I got back, right? When I wasn't feeling well because of sales pressure, right? <laughs> and now she called me this morning. What did the doctor say you had? Because I'm out today sick with coughing and chest congestion. Ian said he just got over it. So hopefully I didn't infect the whole North Carolina Beekeeping Association when I was up there talking. Um, but yeah, the... The Sonic Tots, yeah, I, the Sonic Tots that I had when I was in North Carolina might have might have did it. But, yeah, everything, I mean, it's, we've just been sick and can't get over it. Even this is day two of antibiotics. I thought I'd be feeling a little bit better, but not not crazy. Um, you know, not, not enough where I feel like tomorrow's the day I'm going back to work, but could be. We'll see what it feels like tonight. Yep, and Ian had a chest cold. So, um, yeah, it's it's interesting. I But I've been so many places, right? So I've been to Canada. I've been in the airplane. I've been uh, uh, in two casinos, right, <laughs> since then. <coughs> so it could be anything. Um, I'm still well, so I didn't give it to you. So I'm surprised you didn't catch it. That's a thing. So uh, I'm, I'm on everything. I got my zinc and uh, vitamin C and 
I've got vitamin D over there. Everything everybody's recommending. You hear my wife in there coughing. Yeah, she doesn't sound good at all. Yeah, and she's got it. Felt better. I felt worse. Now she's starting to feel bad again. So we're kind of like passing it back and forth a little bit. Yeah, don't come visit me at the moment. Yeah, they, they tested me A, B, and COVID. So it was... Uh, it's it's been a tough few days. That's last night when uh, when uh, Lee said that he was hurt and wasn't you know wasn't planning to go live, and I I said, well, I don't feel good, so I'm not planning to go live then, and we'll just take the night off. So we just uh, you know doing what we can do, and I got up took my medicine and i can't just sit around all day so i started cleaning out this area the office area and getting some boxes old you know i try to recycle boxes when i ship so i'm not buying new ones and kind of you know doing my part to save a little bit i guess and uh i just realized i had a big stack of boxes that was just clouding up the room and wouldn't be in use so they ended up getting taken outside i figure i order enough to keep <laughs> keep that stock going you know but yeah that's kind of what we've been doing not not much of anything just uh doing some inspections and waiting to split the bees yeah i saw grammy's stream that she was on last night and uh yeah you gotta slip her a microphone she just had the the camera mic there, right? Yeah, it was hard, hard to hear. I'm surprised that you're not doing heating and air. It's an ego thing. It it hurts. It psychologically feels like I, I'm a loser. But yeah, um, the battle with the wife and it was taken away from the family because every summer it always hits you hard, and you're just not not around the family for a whole summer. Um, it's going to be different. Um, I've, I, I've, I've actually had one, um, anniversary with my wife now this time because October was always a hectic month that I never saw her during that time. So it's going to be different. Yeah. Well, I hope the best for you because I've often contemplated just throwing the day job towel in, right? I mean, but depending on how your area is. I mean, there's other ways to make money. I mean, I, I did Uber eats just delivering food and was making 750 bucks a week, just delivering people's Chick-fil-A and Wendy's and stuff. You know, it's not a glorious job, but I don't care if the lights stay on, you know, <laughs> what do I care <laughs> where the money comes yeah, from? Yeah. It's yeah, legal. Yeah. So. Kind of enjoy yourself rather than being stuck in a rut. I, I can definitely see that. Brad, how was your day yesterday? Since we didn't really talk. It was very long, long and tiring. Um, I had my usual day in Winnipeg, do my deliveries and go to the packer and do my errands and whatnot. And then B Club be meeting in the evening. So that, uh, that puts me getting home pretty late, midnight often. And, uh, but, you know, it's always nice to have the meeting, see people visit and rub shoulders and, we our our education committee puts on a really good uh presentation they invite some pretty good speakers in and we had actually one of our own speak to us last night and uh, he's he's a queen breeder and uh he he did a really good presentation for us and uh, i i videoed it i haven't watched the video so assuming the video worked out nice um i've got permission to put it on the red river apiarist association uh youtube channel if anybody wants to kind of see what's going on there so yeah really tiring and it fell down the ice again <laughs> yeah up close and personal meeting yeah yeah i went down like a big sack of potatoes so i'm kind of kind of scraped up and stuff and <laughs> my mostly my arms are really sore so how long until the snow goes away oh three or four months now um it's all somebody, down from here Somebody asked me the other day, they said, what are we doing in Winnipeg in the, in the summer? And I said, well, if it falls on a Sunday, we go for a picnic. 
<laughs> well, hey, you're getting pretty good at those Pratt falls, though, to where you don't really injure yourself. <laughs> well, this, this one was bad. I'm I'm pretty bashed up for this one. It was you didn't on have this one on on the camera system. No, no, it was in the city. <laughs> it was on a sidewalk in the city. It was. You, you know, I find myself now after visiting you, uh, when you're walking around your yard, I'm like, I know he came exactly out this door and went this way, or you know, uh -huh. he came off the porch and went into the wood shop and. <laughs> So now I have the whole visual layout, right? It kind of when you when you come like when you came here, I remember you saying that it was like, wow, this is a lot different than what I had kind of constructed in my head as to what was going on here. Yeah. And same thing with Ian's place, right? So yeah. when Ian was in there welding his deck the other day, I'm like, I know exactly how he came in the door and where he was standing. Yeah. And yeah, where the big know, machine was right there. The, Mass the Massey's over here and the, the easy loader's over there and the other mm -hmm. one's sitting on the floor in front of it. And, and then you walk out and out of the door and there's snow and two dogs running across the field. Everywhere <laughs> we went, there was two dogs running across the field. <laughs> I'm like, where the hell are they going? They're just, <laughs> just taking uh, off. <laughs> remind you of Funny Farm. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy Chase's Yellow dog, dog. Just taking just off. Taking off. <laughs> well, that was Yellow Dog was the one that was late there and, and would catch my <laughs> Excuse me for a second. That's all right, buddy. Oh, man. That's but, good. yeah, it's uh, it's getting uh, real around here. We've got a lot of stuff starting to pop open and bloom, and um, the bees that I have that made it through the winter um, are doing really well. Um, I had my first uh, um, queen come back. Not that I grafted, but a first uh, virgin queen come back that no longer looks like she's a virgin. She's kind of long and chunky now. So I marked her yesterday, and we'll see if uh, if she uh, if she does the trick or if I just put a big green bullseye on her back for uh, predators, you know. Uh -huh. I think that's fallacy. Well, uh, I don't know. It, it it it's not been the case for me. You know, I I mark my virgins all the time, and it hasn't hurt my mating success at all. But mine so mine is equally is terrible whether they're marked or not. <laughs> <laughs> is that one you bred yourself, Bob? Well, uh, kind of. I just did a split and put some eggs in there and let them make a queen, and then she went out and. I guess did her business because I mean she did not look like a squatty little virgin. She looked like a a nice fat queen. So, um, so we'll see how she does. And uh, so you're you know, not too far behind Georgia in their schedule, I guess, huh? No, I mean I'm where I'm at. I'm pretty pretty even with like Atlanta. So if uh, if it's Atlanta us augusta you know pretty much around that parallel right there thanks randy and uh i'm gonna get those packed up and out today hopefully i'll get out to the uh probably ups store knowing you you probably ordered a damn case of course you said you cut your hives down so let's see so theoretically, Bob, you could be able to do uh, packages eventually if you wanted, right? Um, well, I'm already doing nukes. Um, I don't really shake packages too much. Um, I, well, I've never shook a package. I've never bought a package. I've never shook a package. So to me, if some, I'm not against it. I mean, I think it, it would actually, for me, if I had a lot of drawn comb, it would be beneficial because I could just put a package in there with comb and they're ready to go. But with a new beekeeper, if they're looking to get into beekeeping, you know, they, those few frames of drawn comb and brood already laid and everything is pretty beneficial to get started. So isn't, isn't the package easier to ship longer distances? I don't know. I, you would imagine if those new cages, I mean, they're ventilated all the way around and everything those are look like they would be uh, easier to ship but i've never never dealt with it i just 
get nukes and resell them. And if, uh, if people don't buy them, then I put them in my stock, right? I just bring new genetics in that way. Because we get most of ours from like Georgia area for packages, but we don't get the nukes, I guess, because we go local if you want to do that. Well, that's what everybody says. But if you're getting nukes where you're at in like May, probably not from your area. They're, I mean, they could be. They could be overwintered. Somebody's overwintered nukes. But uh, I know a lot of those guys drive all the way down here and uh, pick up pick up bees and then they drive them back. The way Charlie does it, right? And uh, Pennsylvania, Charlie comes down. Uh, I guess he's going next week sometime to pick up packages and carry them back up north. So uh, I guess it just depends who your supplier is. Even Greg Burns, I think he drives down and picks packages up in Georgia and carries them back to Ohio and drops off along the way as he goes back up to people. So, um, I mean, you don't really know where those are generated from you you might be able to ask and find out they may tell you where they came from so uh some people don't you know some people do i don't ever sell mine as mine when i'm out here um i always say look i get these packages these are coming or nukes are coming from florida and uh Usually I get three frames and put a couple extra frames in there and beat them up and let them hatch out and have an extra couple weeks to prove what the queen's doing. And then when they come, I show them the queen. So they know that the queen is alive when I put her back in there and they see her and I seal it up and off they go. So just, uh, it's about transparency uh, to me anyway. Um, Brad, uh, Steve's asking, y'all get packages from around the world, or are they pretty much? Yeah, the, everywhere the, the U.S. Usually ship packages in here from. As long as they're not from the United States, yeah. <laughs> they're good oh. to get. <laughs> That's true. We've we've gotten too many diseases from the states over the years. Yeah, that's. Uh, I was looking at a piece of land. I was talking to a guy yesterday. It's two acres. It's out in the middle of nowhere, South Carolina, right? Nowhere is good. And it's got hundreds of acres surrounding it of fields where they plant cotton, soybeans, and peanuts, none of which are particularly beneficial to the bees. Unless the cotton that they're planting is what, what do they say, non-GMO or whatever, um, that's the only ones that may be, uh, may be beneficial. Yeah, you're sideways, Frank. Um, may be beneficial, but my thing is if I move them out there and they're spraying all these fields with pesticides and everything, then it, no matter how far out it looked, I mean, from the satellite view, it looked like your place, Brad, where, I mean, it's just field, right? And uh, you just don't want, I don't want to move out there and try to, you know, spend 20 grand on a couple acres and then move out there and all the pesticides are killing my bees, then that's no good, you know? Yeah. And how do you know? You wouldn't know until you bought the place and put them out there and found out. So that's kind of a, Kind of what the thing, one of the things I'm looking at, my brother keeps sending me stuff up in West Virginia. I think he kind of wants me, he wants to retire and have me nearby retired, you know, and uh, that would be nice. But again, you never know. At least up there, it's all mountains, right? So uh, not a lot of farmer's fields around, but you just don't know what uh, what they've got going on. So, yeah, lots of stuff all the time just clicking around in the background. 
and well, got too, too, too many options, options here, Bob. Take, take uh, advantage of some of that stuff sometime. That you know, it's good to have those options and not be tied down sometimes, right? Right. Well, I've been I've been doing that, and then I was looking at those suits, and I talked to another guy with the B suits that that were they seemed it's a they're still imported from the same country but via canada right so the company that is bringing them in is in canada and they have a much higher quality suit and jacket um mainly the the same issues so the jacket that i was that i've gotten the suit <clears throat> it's primarily in Brad saw it. It's primarily a guardian jacket. It's identical with the exception of I had him put Velcro on the pockets. Like I like, right? It's identical suit, um, which is okay. But there's some things I don't care for. Even with that setup, like the, the veil, the mesh on the veil is kind of cheap and pokes holes in it pretty easily. And, uh, this new one that I'm looking at um, still could probably be bought reasonably and uh, and sold reasonably, but the uh, there was just some much better things. Like it has the elastic around here, but it also has a Velcro that you can cinch it as tight as you want to on your wrists and on your ankles for the full suit. It's got the plastic zipper that you like. Bread with the uh, with the hoops on it. Things, yeah, you can grab those of your gloves in here. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> oh shit! Hey, oops. Oh, Sorry, oh guys. shit! Hi, Holly. You made it in, Holly. Hi, hi, boys. How are you? There goes the monetization. <laughs> <laughs> nope, monetization's gone. We done cussed on here. Well, we, hit, we did have a f bomb from Ian in his video, so. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's oh. all good. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> no problem. But uh, so the suit is much better. And one thing that I really like about it is the zippers under the veil, the the zipper that comes from right to left folds in and the other zipper closes entirely. So there's no gap at all for the bees to get in. And then you can fold the Velcro on top of that as extra protection. And it's just a much better quality suit. The elastic, Spanky saw them. The elastic is real thick on the thumbs. And it's just built to last, you know. And the suits that I've purchased, um, I'm going through at an incredible rate, you know. <laughs> They're wearing out much faster than they should, Um because most of us aren't in the bee yard every single day and working our bees every single day, but I shouldn't be going through two, two bee jackets a year, you know, and that's, if you look at it, I mean, most of them are a hundred and something bucks a piece, $175, you know, if you get a jacket? Full, Oh, guardian jackets are like 175. Um, so are the, uh, what's the ultra breeze. They're oh, 175. Yeah. You I, and I, you know, I pay exchange and shipping for Ultra Breeze, so they cost me over two hundred dollars. And <clears throat> the full suit from Guardian is two twenty five. So I mean, and to me, this the one that I saw at the show is far superior. So um, if I wear my jacket, like I used to wear my jacket every time I go to the bee yard, and and I would easily wear out a jacket in a season. I would easily, easily wear out a jacket in a season. And we got this. We've got this Dunlap disease where our belly Dunlapped over our belt and yeah, your belly rubs on everything, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it snags. <laughs> so, um, that's my, that's my, my crumple zone. That's my bumper. Yeah, that's it. I mean, exactly. That's my shock absorber right there. That's right. But the, uh, you mean that, you guys, that, you know, when just, you bend over, you look like a plumber? Yes. Absolutely. I can't bend over anymore. So. You know, I actually had that concern with this manufacturer. I was like, you know, hey, with the uh, jackets, we need to make them longer for us big guys. You know, if you're getting a three, two, three, four, five X, whatever the case is, that should just be a given that the length is too short. You need to go ahead and just extend well, that. 
Mm. Ultra Breeze has a good good length. I actually have a I have two Ultra Breeze. I have a three X and a four X, and the four X is really nice and roomy. Like even for me, you see me, I'm a big guy, but the four X is nice and baggy on me. But the thing is, it's it's quite long. So it's and it's a jacket. Okay, so uh, what happens then? is it it kind of goes far enough down on me that that the elastic kind of you can feel where the elastic wraps around you and so i feel it feels like my pants are falling down because the elastic is down below my waist so it, it feels like that's the top of my pants but it's not it's the jacket but it's just a weird feeling the jacket because... elastic seems to creep up a lot oh yeah <laughs> This, well, that's this, actually this Ultra Breeze is really was really good. The, the elastic, yeah, they I do give way breeze. after a not while, a, though. Not a real one. That's one three eighths inch crack that I don't want a B to find. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's one B space set that well, needs. Well, again, to and I was going to say that you know I go through B, a B jacket in a season, and then I stopped wearing a B jacket for the most part. And this one that I bought last, I guess it was a year ago, I bought this one. And it's still, you saw it when you were here, Bob. It's like brand new yet. I've worn it twice. And so that sort of preserves my bee suits. You just don't wear them. <laughs> well, the suits that I'm looking at are that same color. And I asked yeah. him about the color. And he's, he's like, well, it's real simple. That color doesn't show the dirt Yeah, as the white ones do. I think, right? it's, a, I think it's a really nice looking jacket as far so, as the color goes. Beautiful. Yeah, the, the fencing veils... I, I like the round veil a little bit better yeah. myself, but um, the main thing is it, I, I can use it. I've got used to using either one of them. I think fencing veils are easier to make. And the fencing veil uh, on this jacket is one of those extended ones. Yeah. So it's not like right up on your face where you can't see anything. It's got the side panel and then the front panel. That zips down so you can get it uh you know you can see your peripheral vision's good because i can still turn my head in it uh pretty nice and i put on an xl which i don't wear an xl but it fit me so feel I, I got from Mad Lake that it's called a clear view they call it uh boy i love that veil i paid a pile of money for it and for me, it was worth it because I really love that veil. It's so airy. It's, it's not, it doesn't get hot in it at all. Visibility is 100%. It's really nice. What's and the you reason can buy those from Man Lake and they have zippers. You can buy, I got the one with the strings, but you can buy the one that has a zipper so you could zipper it onto a jacket. What's the reason they never did like a face shield, clear plastic? Then you they, do, have their... they do have a, a company that. making those. I don't. I don't know. I can't imagine that I'd like that at all. Well, I saw David Burns is one, but it looks like he just hot glued a thing in his thing. I, I, you know, I don't know if that's a kit that you buy or I what. Really breathe on that, right? It, it's, it's. It seems like it'd be hot and and steamy in there or something. I, I don't think I'd like that. They, um, I mean, it's just like glasses, right? My glasses when I look down at a frame or something, I always get sweat off my forehead right into the glass and then it drips down i've got all these salt lines yep. where i can't even hardly see or it slides down my nose and next thing my glasses are inside my veil and i can't see anything so because i have to do that when i do the woodworking i have to do the face shield and welding and i just got used to it the uh melanie that's the one i have the foxhound the olive green foxhound jacket yeah they're nice they're nice. Very nice. Holly, where are you located? Uh, right now I'm in Leona Valley, California. Okay. You, um, is that north or south? Where is that? It's, it's like south of Bakersfield, and it's really far south of NorCal. Okay. It's, um, it's like Lancaster, Palmdale area. Todd's in uh, around Fresno. Are you south of that? Very. Very far? <laughs> Very south. <laughs> so north of, uh, well, everything's north of north, San Diego. I'm, I'm north of Los Angeles. Um, I'm about 64 miles north. Like Oxnard area around in that I'm area. South, south of Oxnard, north like, of L.A. Okay. 
I know ab about where you're at then geographically. <laughs> we're just we're just trying, trying to land, figure out land when your bees are due. I'm sorry. Where'd you say? We're Frank? just trying to figure out where your bees come in. <laughs> uh, the bees are like right behind me. They're, you could probably walk up to a hive or two. I'm on the front porch right now. I can hear the echo of myself on the TV inside the house. <laughs> oh, really? But I'm on we, my phone. Well, we can't hear it outside. Usually, if oh, you'll know if we hear it because we'll say something about it okay, right away. If right. I walk back inside, there'll probably be a lot. Oh, it'll be a, a bad loop in there. Yeah. But the uh, so you get to watch your be bees in the rain. It was raining. Well, it rained a lot, but it's been cold and windy, so. Bees get a little irritated with the wind, and let's see, the things that are in blooming here right now are like the cottonwoods. I have um, a couple of almond trees, but I'm pretty far south for, like, almond country, but um, I don't know if there's an almond tree in the background. I don't want to, I don't know if you can see the way in the background. Now, has your almonds, or have they already flowered? Yeah, there's still there still has flower on two of them. There's only like two trees close by to the house. Um, there's come some down the block, but it's kind of. Was it like a two week block. bloom? Well, the one on the hill has uh, been blooming since the beginning of February, and then the other one didn't start until like the mid February. And it's still blooming. They're both still like have flowers on it, and petals and stuff. But I don't really get almonds off of them. The um, the critters do though. <laughs> they get whatever's on the tree. There's too many. There's too many groundhogs around here and squirrels. Okay, Holly. I know you asked in the chat. This is the swarm rustler lure. This is the one that that I make here myself. Yeah. That's the uh, I need to get like a box from you at a special price that I could special price beekeepers meeting. That's what retail is a special price for me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been in uh, the bee supply, it's in uh, Foxhounds, uh, carries it, um, Bohemia Bees carries it, um. Dancing Bee in Canada carries it, so it's it's been out. This is the second season that it's been out, so it. Well, uh, why don't I carry it out here and and like get it around you, town? You you have a bee supply store? Not really. I have. A, Sounds like someone's shucking for a discount right there. I have friends. <laughs> you got friends? Her. Lots of friends. <laughs> we have a we have a about 250 to 300 members in our club oh, okay well uh our club's been around for over 150 years so well we're if working you, on 151 years this year so. do you put up a table and all at your uh at your b shows or at your club meetings or we have raffles so. well Send me we do, like I just watched uh, Brad's uh, frame jig uh, video that he put out. By the way, that's really nice. <laughs> Wish I had seen that about a month or two ago. <laughs> oh. but, Let me um, tell you something about this guy. Really good jig. And we were outside, and he was showing me this big pile of scrap. And he's thinking about donating to his buddy. And I said, man, you could buy, you could build mini boxes and stuff out of this. He's like, yeah, no. He says, because <laughs> his standard of what he builds is not going to just be any kind of construction, right? So when he builds something, it's got to be perfect. If there's like a little off cut or something, it's like trash. He's not going to use it. So... Unlike most of us, would be like, oh well, it's Shut not it exactly me, right, it. but but he's very particular. Well, I, I I try to do my best. You know, I don't think I'm quite as that fussy, but I no, I you are. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a story behind that, and if you want me to tell a story, 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I built, well, let, let me get up here because there's an illustration of this story. And don't, don't go away. I'll be right back. You're saying we yeah. can live off of Brad seconds, huh? Yeah. I, if I built a box, I would be very proud of the box that I built out of his scraps. But, you know, because I'm not, as long as it seals up, I'm good. But if it doesn't look like perfect, he's not, no, it's not happening. Okay. Uh, before I started beekeeping, um, I started learning woodworking. I've always enjoyed woodworking since I was very young, but never had the, you know, the space and the tools and stuff to, to do it really well. So I started to learn that. And, and, uh, so I started studying things like building furniture and quite some fine woodworking. And I learned some techniques and practiced some stuff and I built some furniture for friends and whatnot and things were turning out pretty nice. Um, and this, this is an example. I built this, uh, I built two of these. This is a, this is a cremation urn. And, uh, this one's a cherry wood. And I built another one out of, um, walnut. It's dark. So, these are for my my parents-in-law. Anyway, so that's the kind of thing where I started with woodworking really a number of years ago. And then when I started keeping bees and started building my woodenware for my bees, I just couldn't help but kind of go <laughs> that extra mile to, I mean, my, my woodenware isn't this stuff, but to just build in, you know, nicer joinery and, and better fitment and better finishes and stuff like that. So it, it just was just kind of a, a progression from where I started. So it's, it's not as much OCD, I guess. Maybe it is. Maybe <laughs> Bob can be the judge of that. But yeah. That, that's the story. Don't, don't mind if I don't ask for one of those boxes, Brad. Well, you got to be careful what you ask for. But, I, don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to use that yet. No, no. I kind of like father-in-law passed a couple years ago, so he's he's using his mother-in-law's. I just thought by building one, I can build two. You must just, have heard piano playing. No, he no, this, brought back. this is mother-in-law's box. <laughs> we put this. What Bob is saying, we put uh, uh, father-in-law in his box on the on his piano in our living room and my wife we did that and, and my wife said there now he can play the piano <laughs> and i turned to her and i said if i hear piano music tonight he's going back to the garage <laughs> <laughs> that's not gonna do <laughs> <coughs> i uh hey if ian's still on here uh i saw where the krtp is hiring a uh um what did they call it let me click over here field slash lab technician full-time there you that, go that's right up my alley it is actually it is exactly up my alley so if i know a guy that knows a guy there have him give <laughs> give me a call <laughs> and i'll send him my resume just be ready for it. <laughs> See, that's the way that's the way you work around the system right there. <laughs> and then they're like, hey, do you have the job offer that says you can move to Canada? Why, sure I do, right here. <laughs> it's from the University of Manitoba, I think, is where it's from. No, it, no, it, 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 KRTP is a standalone entity kind of thing. Oh, well, they, I mean, it just says you got to have a valid driver's license and yeah, but I've got a, I've got all the skills they would need right there. I think. Oh, you'd love that. You'd love that stuff. So. You gotta have a valid Canadian driver's license. Well, U.S. <laughs> driver's license is valid. So. And I know how to work on social media and use the phone and email. So yeah, pretty, pretty good. And all the lab you stuff. Start giving me some tips because I don't know how to work it. Sometimes we get brain damaged on the stream, though, and we're like, wait, I'm trying to get this. Oh, we can't hear anything. You're looking at a nice video, but you can't hear anything. I do that all the time. Forget to click the thing. 
So uh, the little button that tells you that it's live. Oh, sure. right, Who's on I bring it? Uh, I'm trying to catch up on the chat here. It's 70 degrees in Lansing. How it's, do you see uh, the chat? Um, there should be, I think if you're on your phone, there's a button at the top that says comments, but oh. I don't think it'll let your camera be on while you're looking at the comments. No, I just, sure. I just got it. Holly, what's the name of your bee club? Um, I'm the Los Angeles County Beekeepers Association. It's well, not me. I belong to it. So, so you need to get Todd to come up there and show you guys the Appy tablet. The Appy tablet is that the, the, the Ox tablet or the the Appy tablet supplement? So, so I, I've got some right here. Right, well, that's They're what like I'm Journal, journal uh, tablet. That's what I'm building to. Oh wow! Migratory cover. So that's plywood and then uh, trimmed up wood. Yeah, and break your mic. Sounds just like kind of example what what Bob was talking about. I don't see anybody else building like this, but I I do. Uh, let's see, I'll show you the one that kind of is the most obvious. A, a joinery here. You see how that's oh, yeah. rab rabbited into the end cleat. Yeah. Um, I prefer that. I think it's a little stronger. It's a little nicer joint. So I, you know, it takes a lot of extra work actually, but it turns out to be a pretty nice cover. And the, and the seam on is on the side of that, right? For the so the the top is a solid uh, piece of wood, and then the side plywood, and then it's got a half inch shim along the sides. Allows you to put your patties and yeah, it gives you a little space for. Patties and happy tablets. Because <laughs> a lot of guys just slap the wood on the side, and then they have the seam on the top. Oh yeah, yeah. Like you have, you can you, you can do that. So so I put my top plate like that goes over, over the top of that, just so that there's no there's no crack there for you know moisture or anything to get down in there. Uh, a lot of times they'll put that, and then they'll put the end cleat on on the end, but then you get that crack there. So I don't know if it's really such a big deal, but I just chose to do it this way. It makes it nice. Uh, a nice, solid product. piece. Nice. What's that? That's that side piece is one solid L shape. Fancy cut. No, it's two pieces. I don't it's see the, the lighting. Seam. The lighting isn't very good. Well, that's that's because I care, right? There's a seam right there. You you can't really I don't see it. Believe it. I don't see the seam. <laughs> so you have the L and the C. I can't get it close because then it's too dark. Oh, there you go. I can see, you can that. see it. Oh, wow. I can see that. What is it, like a joiner or something? Man, that's tight. Well, that's when that's what happens when you have a furniture builder make woodenware for you. <laughs> oh, goodness. And then, and then those all is go to the a, wax chipper and shit. Yeah. Lid? What's that, Holly? Is that a six frame lid, Brad? That's a six frame, yeah. I yeah, I get in a habit I call it eleven slides. inch cover, but but it's yeah, it's a six frame eleven inch cover. Now, is there a standard six-inch frame size, or is it, does everybody come up with a certain size that is standard now? I don't know. I don't know. Ours are eleven inch on outside now. It's seven eighths box, so uh, three quarter box would be a quarter, you know, ten and three quarter probably to maintain the same inside dimension. I don't know. I don't know what that standard is to be honest. These are made really so that they fit. Three across is the same width as two 10 frame boxes, which is how we right. use them. We put honey supers on top. I know Bob was running into that last year when he was doing those two nukes on a stack. Yeah, three which nukes. Is... The three nukes. So they use five eighths lumber for their deep boxes. So when you buy six frame nukes, seven eighths. Yeah. what I say? You said five. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? Seven eighths. <laughs> Nearly one inch. Well, yeah, they're, the they're bigger is, up there. So when you put a three-quarter box on it and you smash them together, they don't overhang, right? I mean, they're too small. So, um, 
so yeah, I had to go through the whole buying seven eighths boxes to try to make it work and probably would have worked, but well, even in our case, like the our 10 frame boxes are 16 and 5 eighths wide and three of the and, and the six frame boxes are 11. So that's 33 inches, but 16 and 5 eighths wide then is 33 and a quarter. So the, the two 10 frame boxes are a little bit wider technically. However, because you have three joints in the, the 11 inch boxes, one joint in the the end frame boxes that joint is never zero right it's always going to have a little bit there so the 11 inch boxes end up being every bit as wide as the two 10 frame boxes in in all practicality and it doesn't matter if it's an eighth or quarter out it doesn't matter the uh but i tried it in it's obviously we don't have the nectar flow that you guys get up in Canada here. And uh, I don't know if that was part of it or if when I put them there, they weren't strong enough or to get them to move up into those deeps. And then I lost one of the Queens died or something. And then they just refused to replace her because uh, that's, a problem. Fair one the other one. that's right. But, but yeah, I mean, I'm st I might try it again this year. I've got some stuff coming in. To... You know, I, I don't think for, for I don't know if it's a really something that you know a hobbyist or a small uh, operation really needs to bother doing because what it is is it's it's a way to manage these nukes in a large operation with a, a little bit less time consuming management of these nukes that we can just make these six frame nukes them rolling put the queen excluders the honey supers and then we just treat them like every other colony in in the apiary from there on in through the honey flow um so i don't know it, it, it's not that they do anything magical for you it's that it's an easy way to manage those nukes through the honey flow i just thought it was a way instead of going back out there and you know constantly having to put six frame boxes on top for honey supers that they would all be able to work together and fill those boxes, but just, you know, small scale for me. Why, well, thank you. So, so, look, I appreciate it. so is it better just to replace the whole nuke with a, a, a standing nuke that is um, thriving if, if you lose a queen like that next time? Just bring another whole box in from somewhere else? Well, the thing is... And the, switch it out? Would that... Yeah, but it's a little bit difficult because when you take one box off, right, you take one of the deeps off while well, you're also exposing half of the middle nuke. So it's uh, you you got bees going everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. But. They are a little bit of a pain when you have, especially you have to manage that center box. It's It's a bit of a pain. You know, the lid gets stuck down. You can't pry on the end of the side of it because the other two lids are there. Often I have to take the other lid off before I can pry the middle one up. And you're leaning over the other box. And it's a little bit of a pain managing that center one. Brad, ever considered using five eighths instead of three quarters for lids and pallets? Yeah, I, I have. And it, it, it works fine. It's mostly momentum at this point that. I've built everything on three quarter. I want everything to fit together just right. So I just keep doing it. If a person was starting, I don't see any problem at all using five eighths plywood. It will save you a, a good little piece of money. I guess, especially if you're wax dipping it as well. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it, it might not seem like much, but I could tell the difference when I pick up a five eighths cover and a three quarter cover. I can tell the difference in weight. And when you carry a few of those, you stack a hundred of those on your truck, you're definitely going to save some weight. So there's always that. Do you have the same kind of plywood we have? Instead of Twitter, it's like 1164 or and something like that, some oddball size. It's just uh, like a, a tad under. Yeah, yes and no. Um, this is what I use is, is construction plywood. It's, it's made for, for sheathing houses and stuff. 
So first of all, it's an exterior grade glue. It's a waterproof glue in the, the laminations. And it's actually a three quarter inch. I mean, it's never exact, but yeah, it's actually a three quarter inch plywood. Whereas if I buy plywood to build furniture, it yeah, it's going to be 11 sixteenths. Wow. Yours is always undersized. So if you want three quarter, you're really getting like a half inch. You want a half inch, it's really three eighths. You know, it's like always shorten you. It shouldn't be more than a sixteenth or so different. And and like, I think, I think it's uh, like 23, 30 seconds or something like that is the measurement on it. Yeah. But it's, it's three quarter inch, you know, by all, all measures, it's three quarter inch. He also buys it by the pallet. Or two. Or two. <laughs> Looks like you got some nice weather over there, Holly. Yeah, it's it's kind of sunny today. I'm outside sitting on a, a log that just kind of cracked. <laughs> so I'm supposed to be How many colonies fire. are you currently running? Uh I'd have to count. Not not really that many. I'm I'm um, it's like maybe twenty five. I think somewhere around there. We don't discriminate in this chat. A lot of people, you know, you ask that question, they they're a little hesitant, but yeah. we don't care if you have oh, zero yeah, or a thousand. It doesn't matter. To, you know, we let Frank in. That should be the first sign that we're we're not picky. We're, we're not picky. <laughs> Did he even hear it? I don't think oh, he I'm heard Frank. that. Who's, who's Frank again? Frank <laughs> is Galloway right? Lights here. Oh, okay. Sorry. Nice to meet you, Frank. Hi, I'm Frank. I lost 10 colonies this year. <laughs> well, you're oh, you're not even trying. Yeah, you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. I always, I mean, when someone asks me, it's like, well, it's around this amount because anytime you go out there, you'll either find a swarm moved into something or something is, you know, le left or <laughs> you never know. It just is always up and down. Well, when, when Holly said that, I, I was going to say it sounded like me because people ask me that all the time. Well, how many colonies do you have? I don't even know. Like, <laughs> it's yeah, about I, I maybe. Really, I'm just guessing right now. So, um, and Loma, Loma Vista said, Holly, where are you located again? So I'm in Leona Valley. So hit Palmdale, hang a left. If he, if he knows. You should ask Brad how many yards he has. <laughs> Either two or three, generally. He's got a big enough spot there. He could put a lot of bees right there if you want. At least he remembers that. Well, it's, 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 it's about the available forage, though. I was surprised. I had a lot of bees in my home yard last year, and they produced a lot of honey. The uh, That's, I mean, for me, I don't know what that number is, right? Because I'll have anything. I'll have two framers going, five framers going, you know, single deeps, double deeps, just depending on how strong they are. And... Uh, you know, I try to move some stuff around, but coming up like uh, I've got queens coming from Jose in May and I've got uh, nukes coming supposedly in the next couple weeks. So we're going to we're going to see how it goes. Plus what I've already got. So I'll probably be up around 75 again this year, but it's going to be different. Because this is going to be 75 the gold that are going to be uh, grown up, right? It's not going to – I'm going to sell a few of them just from people that have casually, at, casually asked me if I sell. But I'm not marketing to sell. These are bees for my yard and uh, just to get my numbers back. Oh, my gosh. Look what we got. Todd. Hey, Todd. Hey, Todd. Hey, Todd. What's happening, guys? Oh, it's pre-taco time. Yeah, it's, uh, what, 20 minutes to taco so time. Bob, yeah. you're going to have the side yard, the front yard, and the backyard? I'm going to have three yards. Yeah, my front, my back, and the side. That's where it's going to be all over the place. I already can't walk out in the yard without getting a bee in my head or something, you know. 
Hey, Holly, I have a question for you. You need to start a roof yard. Say that again. Uh, Holly, where are you located at? You need to start Once a roof again. yard. <laughs> Le Leona Valley. Where Where is that? Is it by Bakersfield? No, it's it's like south of Bakersfield. Oh, before the grapevine or after? So yeah. Do you know where Palmdale is? Yeah. So I'm, I'm uh, west of Palmdale. Oh, okay. On, um, what's that, 58? That... Uh, it's off of Elizabeth Lake. Oh, Elizabeth Lake, okay. Okay. Oh, okay, I know where it's at then. Okay. So, sorry to That's... interrupt you, Holly. Where are you located again? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brad, you got me there. South of Canada. Yeah, it's south of Canada. Go to Lac La Bash and like hang a right. Okay. I know where that's at. All so right. Todd, you're Clovis. I'm in Clovis, yeah, by Fresno. Well, next door to Fresno. He's like four hundred miles north of me. <laughs> it's not that far. <laughs> what is it like? Three fifty? Mm, no, no. It's two hundred, maybe two and a quarter. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it takes me about. Uh, I gotta drive more. Two and a half hours for me to get to Palmdale. Maybe a little more. So. It's not that big of a drive. Not like James. It's not like an 18 hour drive. To go to the grocery store, it's 18 hours for James. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> He's got to get the, the helicopter to Hilo in his uh, milk every week. Who's James? <laughs> Did I meet James? No, he, James was in the chat. He's a uh, old McNally's bee farm. He's in. Grand Prairie, Alberta. Doesn't anyone always eating the there. ice cream cone in the chat? Yes. Just like you. You know, Frank comes in changing transmissions into the live stream and, you know, using power tools where nobody can hear him. Or bad cell signal where he's freezing up like he is now. <laughs> or, or standing under a loudspeaker at Disney World. Oh, yeah, you did that, too. Oh, that was fun. For everyone, for you, but nobody that was listening. <laughs> you can see, he's back out again. Yeah, he has a lot right, of issue. You're going to have to try that again another time. <laughs> <laughs> so, the uh, yeah, so uh, usually we do these chats on... Tuesday nights, but we were uh, feeling under the weather last night, and tonight uh, the stream team is on, and tomorrow night Ricky Rourke is on at um, Horizontal Bees, and then Friday is Charlie's stream, and Saturday is kind of a free-for-all. Oh, she just dropped. But uh, So, you know, we come in and out every all the week and then we got a uh, gun line on sundays frank are you gonna be able to stay in this time it's like time <laughs> seven i've added you back i've been three different places in the house i can't figure a spot. go back to heat and air so you get good internet it's funny because i'll see you guys still walk uh talking in the chat and then slowly one box at a time will go away where you're like pixelating and freezing up and your lips and your voice don't sync up right now. Even now. Oh yeah. But the, uh, that's no, bad. Pretty much. Let me see. Okay. That makes sense. Now I was looking for you last night. Yeah. We were sick yesterday. So we just decided to, I decided to, uh, show that video that Ian did. Um, and I mean, 
it worked for him, right? So it's uh, it's a good tool. All right. Well, I, I, I hate to bump in and run, but I got to bump no, out. You don't. You I got to hop out. Go truck. We know. I got to bounce. All right, yeah. man. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> All right. See ya. See ya, everyone. What you doing over there, Brad? He's got us muted. Let's see what he's doing. Let me. That's my stuff. Making something. He's. So, is that a two car garage? Yeah, but it two car garage, but it's I think it's longer. Yeah, it's it's thirty by thirty. Oh, I just wondered if you guys are interested, I could do a little little build video on uh, live here if you want me to. Heck yeah, let's do it. Anybody want that? So is that a two inch hole? Yeah, so I do a two inch feed hole here. And uh, there's a little bit of nailing and stuff going on, so sorry there's gonna be a little bit of noise. But I got all my parts here in front of me. And these are those cleats that I was telling you about that I, I do the, the rabbit joinery on them. So first thing I start with, these are cut oversized. Uh, it's 11 inch cover, but these are cut larger and larger by, you know, a quarter of an inch or so, maybe even bigger in some some situations. So I try so to you put have about a quarter inch overhang all around the box when you put it on? No. Uh, I make them just right. So they're just exactly the same size as the box, so they fit nice and tight. Uh, but that I'll explain that. This is the right length, but it's oversized width, and I'll explain that. Okay. So I try and get the, the nicer side, which I think is this side because there's a big knot here, and I'll put that side down. Okay? So then I just get my glue. And I use a nice waterproof glue. It's tight bond three. And let me know if you can't see things. I'll try to do this fairly yeah, quickly. I can't see the glue. So without wasting your time. And I've got a two inch 16 gauge nail here. I just nail that in the end. Like that. It's actually pretty quiet, your nailer there. Yeah, it's not too bad. And so I I'm I'm flushing that that end cleat up to this side here and you can see that it's not flush there but that's the trim uh -oh. side okay that's by design that's the trim side i want that to be a little bit long you scared so me and do the other one right it's all about trimming it up at the end so now my flush side is is on the far side here so i have to keep checking the camera so you can see nail that in here Okay, just I don't want the glue dripping because I'm going to turn it over. Okay, one of my nails kind of poked through here a little. Put that in a scrap. Not a big um, deal. <laughs> Not a big deal. I can just kind of make sure that's fairly flat. Now the top cleats go on. And Brad? again, up. Oh, yep. Did you mention what size nails the your Brad your your? Yeah, your it's a 16 gauge two inch nail. Okay. So top cleat, again, I'll choose whatever is the, the nicest side. And I'll start on the bottom. Put some glue here. I should have my brush, but I just have my finger right now. That's a sticky situation. That is a sticky situation. I'm, I'm giving it the finger. Do you find <laughs> that glue works better if you put it on both pieces of wood and put them together, or does not matter? Yeah, Frank, it kind of does. Uh, in this case, it, it's usually pretty good, but you're right. If you put glue on both sides, you just have to be careful. Like, don't put too much glue because you're doubling up. But, yeah, that's a good point. It can work better or at least I also good. noticed when I put it on, it dries, it sets so fast. If you don't get it on right away, it's useless too. Like, if yeah. you're doing a whole bunch of them, glue them up and get them on quick. This is a quick. pretty fast set glue. Different glues are different. So this... This piece, I'm going to rub this. See, I've just rubbed that piece, and I can't even hardly move it now because it's stuck down. That's called a rub joint, and you can glue something like that. I could leave that, and it's fine because, look, that piece is on there now. But I still nail it just to make sure it locates and it stays where I want it to be. I'm just going to nail that again. Right? There. Just 
before it. Well, I was today's t- today years old when I figured when I found that out. When you just showed me that that would happen, that rub, rub joint. Yeah, You're just putting a suction on there, right? Yeah, Vacuum. that one. It's not as flat here because this nail is kind of sticking up. But I don't really need the rub joint. I can hold it. I just wanted to demonstrate that rub joint principle. Okay. All right. So now, difficulty here is this is not, you can kind of see a gap there. And I can clamp that with my woodworking clamps until that glue dries. But I don't have that many clamps and it's a big pain. So I just use screws. I've got an inch and a quarter, number eight, Robertson head screw here. And if you don't use Robertson screws, you should, because you'd love them. Is that like the uh, the X style, but has a little fancier collar? Looks like a torque. You no, know, it's a square. It's a square, like an Allen wrench. No, the Allen wrench is a hex. This is a square. Ah. They use that a lot on like deck deck screws and stuff. And what's nice about them is it's one handed. You put the screw on the driver and it won't come off. See? So I just put some screws in there to hold that top cleat nice and flush. Or nice and tight, I should say. Now, anytime I've built a top, they, well, I won't say that I've built a top, but that I bought tops. Yeah. They bowed for whatever yeah. reason. They just, the store I'll bought ones are crap. I'll talk about that. One of the things that I'm. Which way do they bow, Rob? Or Bob? They usually. Side to side? Yeah, they usually bow from end to end. One of my nails poked out. Put it in a scrap pile. So, I'll talk about that a little bit. I'm very fussy about my grain direction. Uh, if I wasn't fussy about my grain direction, I'd make more money at this because often I get off cuts and I want my grain direction to go this way on the lid. Okay. And that is for a few different reasons, but chiefly, well, it looks the best. Um, and also, when when the weather hits the plywood, plywood is pretty stable, but it's not perfectly stable. And when when weather hits the plywood, the the top part, the top lamination of the plywood will expand first, and that's how it bows. And what happens is the the grain is this direction, the plywood will expand this direction. Okay, it doesn't expand with the grain really very much at all. It's inconsequential, but it expands quite a bit uh, against the grain. Okay, so what I've got here is when it expands against the grain, it will tend to want to warp this way because the top gets wider, but the bottom doesn't. So it has to bow up to accommodate that. Now, I've got two pieces of... uh, one inch lumber here on the flat, and I've got a, two pieces of one inch lumber on edge that's gonna keep that flat. So so that'll that'll keep that quite flat. And if if I put the the grain this direction, then when that got wet, the cover would tend to bow this way. Okay. And I don't have as much support that way to keep it flat, because what I do have is oh dear i don't have Uh oh what i do have is 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 my my end cleats my side cleats or shims i should say here so this is all that's going to support it this direction and that's not nearly as much support as what's on the end okay and i forgot i need to go and actually zip a couple of little pieces to to do this so entertain yourselves and i will be right back all right (laughs) the uh i'm gonna drop him out for a second like that and the uh so yeah i whenever i buy whether it's man lake lids or whatever 
they're they're just crap. They just fall apart. Wood is nothing more than a series of straws grouped together by design. That's how it transfers sugar and sap from the roots to the buds. Yes, sir. So, um, Robert Screws. Trying to catch up on some of the comments here, guys. Yeah, this old Canada. That's what we're watching, Darren. <laughs> All right, you, you got some? All right, hey, let me make them big got my, got my pieces. Now I'm going to glue. And again, this is waterproof glue. So it's going to last outside. And uh, you can't quite see that one, but I'll just put some along the edge. And again, this is my flush side. This is the side that I make it nice and flush right over here. So what I'm going to do. Uh, okay, we'll put some on here as well. So I'm going to take this piece, and this is a half inch. Now you can see I've made that out of seven eighths wide lumber, and I'll explain why in a minute. This part might get loud. Well, they one inch screws. No. Are they one inch? Okay, so these little ones on the end, these are measured just right. And the way they're measured just right is the 11 inch width of the box minus inch and a half because I want to end up with a three quarter inch um, uh, shim on this side. So they, they determine the overall width of that, of that cover, really. What okay. size uh, brads are you using in that gun? I'm using a narrow crown staple for that, and they are an inch long because I've got an inch and a quarter between the half inch shim and the three quarter plywood. So I want to stay under that inch and a quarter. Okay, so now the last piece determines the width of the cover. I want to get some glue right on the end. And so I just kind of have to sort of guess where that is because you can see how long this, uh, how wide this cover is now, right? It's much too wide. For some reason, I think that's a three quarter inch piece, but that doesn't matter. Okay. So now the explanation as to what I'm doing here with these wide pieces. This cover is, if I did it right, this cover is going to be uh, 11 and a quarter. And it's not. Uh, so I think this was, that was actually a three quarter inch piece. Uh, yeah. So normally we'll put seven, see this is a seven eighths. See, what my plan is to put a 7 8 piece on each side, and then I can trim it an eighth on each side after I make this, you know, 11 inches, if that kind of made sense. Because I really, I really want to make my last cut a trim cut to make all of this joinery nice and smooth and perfectly even with each other. That just makes it a nice product. But you can see how much this is overhang here. And that's that's my oh, design. Wow. So I can trim that off, right? So that's the cover. Now the next thing I do, and I'm not going to do it today. When I'm all done assembly, I'll take my little router, which is right here. It's my little handheld router, and I'll just run it along all the edges, run it along here and all the way around. Uh, I'll, I will not run it around here because you need that sharp edge for that plug to fit. I'll run the router all the way around here. And that just makes all of the edges nice and rounded. And it's very, very nice to handle the cover after that. It's no sharp edges. Uh, so that's the very last step. And then they're ready to go to the company that dips them in wax. Now, do those, do those stack? Uh, with the pa their pallets the same as your other ones, the way you exactly. design them, they they are exactly the same. They I build, 
I built uh, three different sizes of covers, 10 frame covers, six frame covers, four frame covers. Other than width, they are identical in every way. Um, I've got a whole, you can't even see them. I've got a stack of 10 frame blanks here that I have to do as well. So yeah, they stack up just, you don't even know the difference between a 10 frame, like a two way pallet with 10 frame boxes or a three way pallet with six frame boxes. Dimensionally, they're absolutely identical in every way. So they stack up really nicely for transport or putting in the shed or whatever. So that's what that's what uh, I like about that design that you've done is that it's kind of modular. Yeah. Right? So your pallets stack really nicely on top of each other, on t the hives on top of each other, and it and like you said, it doesn't matter what system you're using because they're all the same dimensions that you can stack six frames on 10 frames and, you know. Well, I've, got a, I've got a pallet right there, Bob. I'll, I'll grab it and we can show that uh, in context here. Didn't want to put you through a bunch of work. No, no, that's okay. I love the company. All right, he's bringing over a pallet for us to take a look at. Yeah. So, Brad, you're used to talking to, to a bunch of snowflakes, huh? What's that? You're you're used to talking to a bunch of snowflakes, eh? Well, I don't know about that. So this is a two-way two-way pallet. The only thing missing are the clips. Are the clips? So the 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 hive the box clips just go in here. I've got a little 3 16 rabbit that I cut there to fit the box clip, and then this one here. So it's pretty basic. Um, one thing I did last year, I started doing, is because the customer I was building for, he's a he's a beekeeper who checks the bottom of his hives a lot, especially in the spring. So I said to him, I said, you know what? If I made this back piece a little wider because I was just putting a one inch piece in here and it had a three quarter inch space. I said, if I could make that inch and a quarter or inch and three quarter there, that would support your box when you tip it up. He said that he thought that was an excellent idea. So that's what I changed last year. So I'm still doing that. And so these covers, what Bob was talking about, if I flip that pallet over, and of course, remember this is all upside down now. If you have a beehives, I mean, if you're putting them on a truck to haul them somewhere or you're putting them in a building to winter or whatever you're doing, the cover that I build for the, the beehives on the bottom, you put a pallet on top of that cover and it locks in. Oh, wow. That, right? So saves you three quarters of an inch and also they're not going to go flying off off of each other and that's important sometimes we're working in the snow where you get snow between them and they'll slide apart um the other the other feature is that the cover is designed you could see that to be exactly the dimension as the pallet okay and that's so that if you ever strap the load on a truck uh when you put the straps over the load and there's multiple pieces they all pull together and when you tighten the straps. And this is made so that the pallet and the covers all come together at the same time. Uh, and because if they don't, then you're gonna have covers that are doing this and boxes that are getting stressed one way or the other. So that's why I make the, the cover and the pallet exactly the same width or depth. Another I think thing. it's a great design. It seems to work really well. So this this is the three-way pallet or the pallet for the six frame boxes. You see this covers kind of the width of the box. And I don't build boxes, so I don't have one in here. 
And so there's four clips. There's two clips here, two clips here. Uh, these have to be kind of precise because they have to be exactly fit that box, right? So I go through great lengths to make sure that's going to fit the box. I actually have a box. I put the box on every pallet and I draw a pencil line uh, to line up the, the clips just right. So what I've done is this, a back cleat? Yes. Yes. And I was just going to cover that. That uh, This is what I do with these because, uh, again, the, the, this customer that I'm building for he uses these for making nukes and he puts cells in the nukes and, and mates his queens in these. Uh, but he also winters these in his building. So typically he had his three-way pallets set up so that he has two entrances here and one entrance there. Uh, that works really well for mating, but when he puts them in his shed, uh, he, he can't put the, the pallets back to back because there's an entrance on each side, right? So what I do is, uh, I don't have any right here with me, but what I do is my entrance reducer is a just a block of wood. It's a wedge actually, and um, it's reversible. So you can put the wedge entrance, uh, it's a block, it's not a reducer, so it fits tight in here. You put it in this side for mating. So you got entrance, entrance, and then entrance here. And then when you go to put them in the shed in the fall, you just move that to the back. Now all your entrances are here. You can stack these back to back, uh, save yourself a lot of space in the shed and not only that, but with, with the covers the way they are, you know, the interlocking cleats and whatnot, uh, they act exactly like the two ways. So you don't have to even sort them if you don't care to. You can put two-way pallets, three-way pallets in the same stack, in the same row, and it doesn't matter. They just act exactly the same as far as that goes. So, yeah. It's a great system. Now, is that fully your design, or is you just totally tweaked this from things that you've experienced? Well, I, I, I tweaked it, and it's, it's kind of ironic because um, when I started keeping bees, I sort of decided how I wanted to manage and I started looking online for different ideas and there was a beekeeper who had described what he does and he had some pictures. I saw these pictures and this picture was a two-way pallet and I thought, hey, I want to do that. Uh, so I looked at the pallet and I started thinking about how I wanted to manage my bees and, and you know, as far as transportation and stacking them in the shed and all that. And I, I tweaked his design a little bit mostly with the, the back set runners, the smaller cleats, so the interlock and that kind of stuff, those little features. And uh, and it worked out really good. And ironically, he uh, he was privy to my design and what I was doing, and and he asked me to build a bunch of equipment like that for him. <laughs> so he liked the little tweaks that I made to his design. So we kind of helped each other out that way. Incredible. Yeah, I, I really like that. One day, my apiary will graduate to where I need equipment like that. <laughs> the lids and all that would be awesome uh, for me, but uh, I don't need pallets at this moment. Yeah, you know, you don't need to run pallets either to use a lid like this because the advantages of a lid like this to me are it's one piece, it's very light, uh, it's, you can build it, it's easy to build, and they don't blow off like a telescoping cover. Telescoping covers blow off. I don't put anything on these as far as a brick or a rock or anything like that. These just go on the box and they stay there. I don't have a problem with them blowing off. I'm not saying they can't because it, you know it can happen, but um, it's, I don't have a difficulty. I know a lot of people have difficulty with telescoping covers. Oh, the covers are always blowing off. Well, maybe use something like this. They don't blow off. And, and it's super easy. We might have someone else joining us in a minute. Possibly. 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 We'll see. Somebody well, you know, Brad. Thanks for humoring me in, in the wood shop. I got oh, one yeah. more cover Do what? You got one more I lid one done. More so I got two done now. So what's the advantage of the six-frame nukes? 
What's uh, the end of a six frame nuke? Well, forty percent more space for the bees. Over, over as as compared to what, Frank? Well, I see fives and I see eights and I see ten. I'm just okay. Yeah. Okay, so what's the advantage of a six over a five? Well, Bob just said it. It's 20% more space for the bees. 20% more laying space, 20% more feed space for the winter. Uh, it, they do winter better. It's a nice one to handle. And just like uh, if you made those, I call them a, a double five or a side by side, you take a 10 frame box and put a divider and run two fives. And then you can put a 10 frame super on top of that. So that's the same idea. You can put your standard um, honey flow equipment right on top of this system, right? And with the pallet, it's all got one bottom board. So they're all nice and even and pulled together really well. Uh, so that's that's one advantage. Uh, it's not an advantage over a double five because you could do that with those two. But, you know, something else, it might be an advantage. And like I say, some people, the management advantage maybe isn't an advantage, but when you're running quite a few colonies, then everything helps. Well, we'll see if he gets back. Is your mystery guest? Yeah, I don't know. If he, uh, he kind of answered me, but because I have that tab muted, I didn't hear it. And when I checked back, it's been... 10 minutes or so since he responded. Oh, so I, I responded back to him. So we'll see. Cause I was all, I was all enthralled with the woodwork in here. Yeah. But, well, uh, thanks for taking interest, you know? Oh yeah. I'm, well, I mean the amount of work, um, it amazes me because I, I'm a little bit more privy than most people in the chats because I talk to you every day pretty much. Yeah. And so I see my witch up. <laughs> and I see see the stacks of woods, you know, wood growing, changing from pallets to you know stacks yeah. and stacks of parts. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, when you when you just see, you know, I think you can kind of see this right behind me. When when you just see this, I'll try to give you a better look. It's very congested in here because there's so much in here. But when you just see you know this these are these are all of the end and top cleats for the 10 frame covers that i'll build in a little while so you see that and you think there's just a pile of stuff sitting here in the wood shop yeah but this changes every couple of days you know in, in some cases this this will be more than a couple of days but um the uh the six let's see there. so that's 200 lid parts right there on that pilot down down here yeah yeah this is so there's 800 cleats uh in all so there's 50, there's 50 in a uh, 50 in a bundle right so there's four bundles in a stack here but these are all the, the six frame cover blanks up there that i'm working on now so and that's that entire lumber pile that you had in the yard the other day well this is some of it you still got more out there? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, there's there's plenty. That's what they do. Keep their winters full. Yep. Yeah, I went through quite a few logs out in my yard and I can't believe they're all gone. The uh so David asked a question. Two ten frame boxes fit over three six frame boxes? Yes. Okay, so I'm wondering, here's a question. You'll be the woodworker math, math, mathematician on this. So if you have three quarter inch wood and you have three six frame boxes that are made out of three quarter inch wood, would two 10 frame boxes that are made out of three quarter inch wood fit on top? Well, if you have the same internal dimensions, your six frame three quarter inch box should be 10 and three quarter inches wide on the outside. So three of them side by side by the math is uh, 31 and a half, 32 and a quarter. So the, your your dimension of your, your pallet then would be 32 and a quarter. But you've got to add to that because 
your boxes are never perfectly 100% zeroed out when, when they meet. And you've got to add probably 3 16 to a quarter of an inch there, right? So 32 and a quarter, then two of those, you'd want to go 32 and a half to 32 and three quarter for the overall width of those three boxes. And then your 10 frame box, again, assuming the same internal dimensions, mine's 16 and 5 eighths outside and yours, yours would be uh, 16 and a quarter. 16 and, well, 16 and three quarter or 16 and three eighths by, by the book quarter. as far as, as far as, you know, what mine are. So that's all I have to go on. But they're 16 and a quarter outside, Frank? That's what mine are. Yeah. yeah. So, and again, a quarter of an inch isn't that big a deal, but it's still there, especially when you have two. So if you have 16 and a, uh, 16 and a quarter, then that's 32 and a half, right? But then you add a little bit in the center because they're never going to be tight. You come up with the same 32 and 5 eighths, 32 and 3 quarter for the, that you calculated for the, uh, the six frame boxes. So, so as long as you're using the same wood for both your 10 frame and your six frames, then hypothetically two box, two 10 frames should fit on three six frames. Yeah, I think it would work out anyway. You'd have a little bit of quarter of an inch overhang or gap here and there, but it's not going to amount to that much. I think the Canadian 78s gives you a little more fudge factor because you have a little bit more to... Well, you know what? what's really nice about the 78s wood is that the frame rest is still the same uh, dado. Um, rabbit, actually. The rabbit in, that makes the frame rest is still the same, except I've got another eighth of an inch width for that thin piece of wood on the end, right? Mine is an extra eighth wide, so it's much stronger than than your three quarter box would be. Yeah, you sneezed on ours and it's gone. Yeah, yeah, they're actually pretty robust for ours because it's a three eighths. I think it's a three eighths uh, rabbit. I've seen they're, other countries put like a strip on the outside of the box and they actually frame the whole thing like a rim. Yeah, uh, the the British what they call national boxes I think are like that. Um, where they just kind so of they overlap them. when you stack them so that the air can't go through, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the most, so it must be fun just equipment you can, you know, with the tape measure and a little bit of math, you can make anything work if you're going to build something custom. This was this sizing and stuff, this was not my idea. Um, uh, it's something I don't know who did it first, but my box builder guy was the first one I ever saw that was making these six frame boxes and then just got some momentum in, in the beekeepers around here. And they're pretty, pretty uh, pervasive in operations these days. In this you wouldn't area. want to see my woodwork. I, I pretty much, to break this. yeah, mine, yes. mine is not accurate at all. I basically hold the piece of wood up there and then uh, it needs to come to here. Draw a pencil line, zzz, cut it. It'd be the yeah. wood close your eyes and go. Hey. That's it. <laughs> I am not accurate when it comes to woodworking. Not at all. I mean, well, you know, the I fact, use, that, I, the fact that I use some of this equipment is good because if there's anything that's not quite right, then that becomes my equipment, right? I don't sell that. It becomes the stuff that I use. I need it to be as wide as a. Uh, five frame box i put the but i put the whole box on the uh on the saw blade and set the set the gate right oh, that's a that's a good method if you want to make one thing that's the way to do it you know if i'm making 200 lids then you know i'm gonna come up with so and, and a lot of the dimensions i have just in my head like boxes are 20 and an eighth by 16 and five eighths and so these, I add three quarters of an inch to each end. So the pallet is 21 and five eighths. Frame, making frames. And 33 and a half wide, right? So all of these dimensions are kind of just always floating in my head. And I do make plenty of mistakes, don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, my, my only issue when I'm doing this wood stuff is wood always splits. And you, you make it all fancy and stuff. And then you nail it, it splits apart. And the grain goes the wrong way. And Are you pretty yeah. drilling? Yeah, you know, it's like you got garbage at the end. It's like are you pre are you pre drilling? No, these are just the uh, the brad nails. But 
even yeah. with that little hole. I mean, you put a brad nail on the bottom of that, uh, on the bottom of that thing, and what is that? Just, is that a frame or something? Yeah, it's the uh, top or the bottom of a frame. But you put a nail in that little thing, and it yeah. just blows right through that groove. Well, it's and, pretty small, eh? It's just wood. Yeah, it's like tin foil. It just and, and I can't. I you can't see here in the comments. Anywhere so. near the end, they blow out the sides, and and you, you spend all the time sanding them and everything, and then they just blow out with a nail. It's like, oh, what a waste of time. You know why? That, that's why I spend a dollar something on a frame. You, you, you can't you can't imagine until you start doing it. You take a tree and you say, oh, I'm going to be able to make all these hives, and then you start cutting it and realize there's knots, there's splits. There's boofs, goof ups, and by the time you're done, you got more scrap than you actually have product. Now, did you buy that that mill that you got? Did you buy that specifically to do bee stuff? No, I didn't. I did decide that I was going to make. Um, I have older dimension three, one one and three quarter inch lumber for my garages. They're old, old, old antique stuff. And I figured if I was going to do any renovations, it would be easier just to make the lumber so it would match up right where I can splice in parts that are missing and damaged. Right. So, because I was trying to look for the correct size and I couldn't find anybody that makes it. So, I bought that for repairs. <clears throat> and I originally tried to do it with a chainsaw. And I can't imagine cutting lumber with a chainsaw. So, I made the thing and now I just happen to have it. I mean, I, under, I, I just I mute here, so uh, I'll listen to you. I just don't yeah. want to make any noise. Oh uh, no, I was just uh, gonna say that. I mean, I understand people that like to do things as a a hobby and all that, but as far as affordability, it's not practical. I, well, I mean, you've you've tried it. How many did you make and then break and then have to remake a piece or something like that? You know, I'm not. I don't know. I'm just guessing. If it were me, that. I would be messing up on cuts and stuff like that and have to. So by the time you buy the equipment and that's a, is that all your frames right there? Yeah, but that's the problem is you start getting addicted to making frames and then you're like, what the heck am I going to do with all these things? How many frames got... did you make? I have no idea. I just kept making them. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I Hold on, show Brad that. Look, That's frames, Brad. And that, that, that's after my brother started into it, and he's, he went nuts. And I said, well, how, how many are you allowed to have in your yard? So he looked it up. He says, I'm only allowed to have three. I said, yeah, I, I told you not to go over it crazy. I mean, he's got like 20 or so boxes. I'm like, why? You can't have that many. You're not allowed. So now, now we got to find an out yard in order to have more bees. So you're only regulated to have a certain number in your yard? Yeah, I think I'm allowed to have 20 or some number like that. And he's only allowed to have three. And so now we're going to try an out yard. Well, hopefully you, you can find one. Well, we do have one lined up. It's just going to be like watching you all. It's another experience, you know, like moving, making sure you, every time you go out there, you have enough stuff to do what you're going to do. And it's just going to be a whole new experience. Well, I'll tell you what, it is almost 3.30, and we've been going for two hours, which I wasn't planning to do today, but uh, Hanley's Home says it's pretty easy to find out yards nowadays. How's the Appy orders coming in? I only got two so far that I can see. Let me refresh the page. Free shipping. A free shit uh three now yeah three so um i need to get those packed up and get them over to the ups store the post office before they close today you don't have it to the point where they come to you now ups you do, you do so many orders now most stuff i ship out post office anyway it's, it's pins and you know queen market pins and swarm lure and stuff like that most of i do that or i just take it and drop it off so um, and we just, uh, you know, 
do what we can, man. So sell what we can, get it, get them done. And uh, hey, well, sir, I, give you, see you. I give you credit for all the stuff you got your hands into. You're doing it. Well, I mean, it's a little out of time because, like I said, I buy the stuff that I sell. It's not. You know, if I don't use it, I don't sell it type of deal. Or um, I think that's a, a good habit. I mean, I don't just pimp out anything to pimp it out, right? It's not uh, no code or nothing like that at the moment. So it's just what I have, I sell. And if I don't have it or not interested in or can't afford to get into it, a lot of stuff, I mean, I've got stuff I could be carrying right now, but. They want you to order it by the pallet, and I'm just not that, uh, you know, I'm not wealthy enough to do that. Matter yeah, of fact, I remember last year you were thinking about palletizing uh, stuff, and you were ready to break it up for us. Um, you were doing some, like, pre-orders to try and get... Yeah, I was looking at doing some pre-orders with strong microbials, but when I started looking at how much I'd have to carry and for the, you know, money just to be sitting out on my porch until people ordered. Um, because most of my orders come from Amazon. They don't come from my website. Um, my website is typically a better deal because I'm not paying, they're not paying a fee to Amazon, right? I have to absorb that somewhere. So, um, but you know, do a little bit here and there. I'm not getting rich if that's what people are thinking. That's definitely not the case. So, yeah, you were at one time thinking about starting a store. Yes, yeah, still thinking about that. Um, thing is, I don't want the overhead and not knowing if I'll have to relocate everything from here or not with, you know, with the property and all. So, we're just going to take it one day at a time. But anyway, guys, we've been going for two hours. I need to get these. Uh, orders packed up that I do have so I can get them out of here and uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this here stream and uh, you know stream teams on tonight and tomorrow night is Ricky and Friday night is Charlie and Sunday night is uh, Gunline Gunline stream so We'll see you guys again on the next stream. Thanks for the super yep. chats and comments and thumbs up and all that good stuff. And thanks for spending the afternoon with us. Get out there and build something. Get out there and build something. All right. Let's we'll see you guys later. See ya. Bye.